Federal politics can be overwhelming for adults during an election. Imagine how kids find it. David Rockney Corgan is our Eastern Ontario Hub Editor and he's been looking into an initiative designed to help. He joins us on the line now from our studio at Queen's University in Kingston to explain. Welcome to the show. Hi, Jan. All right, so break it down. What is Student Vote? So, Student Vote, uh, it was created in uh, 2002 and it is uh, really a parallel election uh, for students, uh, designed for students grades 4 through 12, so right through till the end of high school. Uh, and it is a parallel election that is uh, going to be doing its uh, sixth uh, federal election. Since they started in 2002, they've actually run uh, 46 parallel elections at all different levels of government. Um, but uh, this is uh, promising to be their, the, their biggest turnout yet. In the last uh, federal election in uh, 2015, they had uh, over 900,000 students uh, participate from uh, 6,600 schools in every single riding in Canada. Uh, and uh, they actually, the, the, the students eerily voted very similar to, uh, to the adults uh, in that election, uh, voting a, a liberal majority, and in some cases, uh, right down to the exact uh, number of seats in the case of the NDP. Um, so it, it's an interesting uh, opportunity uh, for, for students as young as grade four to get to participate uh, in the vote. And I'll actually just add one more thing. In, in Ontario, we had one uh, last year in the 2018 provincial election uh, in, in which the students uh, voted for an NDP majority. So I, I don't know how much we want to read into that about the future of Ontario governance, but uh, I'll, I'll leave it there. Very interesting. Now, you had mentioned the students, grades 4 to 12. They're not, of course, of voting age. But why is it important that we kind of show them the political process? Well, there's a couple of reasons here. So uh, one of them, you know, is an 18-year-old. There's a bit of an embarrassment factor if you're showing up to the voting booth for the first time and, and you know, not necessarily knowing. In fact, it might keep you away from the voting booth if you don't really know too much about the electoral process. So it's about starting people early and young and having them feel uh, confident about voting and about understanding the electoral process. Uh, but also it's, it's about having having an understanding that, you know, it's not just adults that are affected in these ridings, that, uh, you know, students uh, grades four right through high school are also affected by the decisions that are made uh, by governments, by the federal government, by provincial and municipal governments. So it, it allows students an opportunity to, uh, you know, take a stake uh, in, in the greater process that's happening. Now, the writ was drawn on Wednesday, so now we can expect to start seeing some commercials, a lot of platform information, and a lot of stuff on the media. Why is it important for students to learn how to interpret the media that they're going to see? Well, I mean, I'm going to say this, and we could substitute the word adults for students here, but, you know, in order for a functioning democracy to thrive, uh, you know, our citizens, students and adults, uh, need to be information literate. So uh, this is about, you know, in addition to the vote, um, you know, re resources, pedagogical resources are sent out to teachers, uh, including lessons on uh, information literacy. And I'll just briefly go through some of those. So uh, to start, you know, they've got uh, one called informed citizenship, and this is about uh, the, how the information that we receive uh, affects our decision making. So they introduce students to the concepts of, of algorithms and you know on social media often the most emotional content is the one that gets bumped to the top. So it allows uh, students to have a little more of a critical eye uh, when they receive that information and understand about how that uh, affects their, their decision making. Uh, another one is online verification. So what are the tools, the practical tools, the skills uh, that, that we have to verify when things are, are, are true? And one example uh, that the, the folks at Student Vote uh, gave me was Wikipedia. Uh, student, uh, or teachers rather, might uh, not love that as a resource when it comes to essay writing. Um, but if a student is, you know, on a website and you know, wondering if, if what they're seeing is true or if it's a legitimate source, uh, they can go to Wikipedia and usually you know, if it's a real thing, it'll be there. So that's another one. Uh, another one is visual analysis. What are the pictures that we look at? And how do we, you know, how do we have a critical eye when we look at mm -hmm. photos? Has something been doctored? Has it been manipulated? Uh, so that's another lesson. And um, finally, there's journalism and democracy. And uh, this is about sort of putting in students a, a trust, uh, or to not erode their trust in sort of uh, traditional media outlets, uh, like TVO, for instance. You know, there are uh, a lot of students who may not realize that reporters like you and I, JN, we have ethical standards and we have policies in place, um, you know, if there are corrections that need to be made, that sort of thing. So it's about helping students understand uh, that the the media is, is there for them and uh, that they also need to put to together a list of, you know, credible, uh, trustworthy sources uh, as they 
they turn 18 and as they vote in future elections. Well, I'm sure they'll be tuning into our coverage for the election as well in the eastern region for you. David, it's always a pleasure. Lots of information there. Again, your article is up and people can read that. Thanks again and see you next time. Thanks, Jan. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. CPA Ontario is a regulator, an educator, a thought leader, and an advocate. We protect the public. We advance our profession. We guide our CPAs. We are CPA Ontario. And by viewers like you. Thank you.